Well, I think, comrades, the title of the meeting is on the question of lessons for Latin America for the new left in Europe. And I think if we look at the uh, situation globally, we see an entirely new era has opened up from the point of view of capitalism. And it's against that background that I think there are important lessons that we need to draw out from what has taken place in Latin America because, in a sense, it was ahead of the broad cycle uh, internationally. And, uh, if, you go back to the, if you go back to the beginning of this century, we saw the coming to power of a whole series of left, as they termed it at the time, new left uh, uh, governments. It was socialism in the 21st century. We had Chavez coming to power in Venezuela. Uh, we had, uh, of course, Morales in uh, Bolivia. Later on, we had, uh, in a different form, we had Lula uh, coming to power, uh, heading the Workers' Party government in uh, Brazil. We had, of course, uh, Correa in Ecuador. And it was a dramatic swing to the left throughout the whole of uh, the continent. And that really was in advance. It was in uh, contradiction to what was happening elsewhere, in Europe uh, in particular, at, uh, at that particular stage. And yet, if we look at what happened, despite even the most left and combative of those uh, uh, regimes and governments, which was really seen in Venezuela with the coming to power of the Chavez government, they were pushed through uh, uh, a whole series of measures in an extremely left direction uh, in relation to what we've seen since the collapse of the former Stalinist states in 1989-92. For the first time, in Venezuela, it was echoed a little bit in uh, Bolivia, um, and also uh, in Ecuador, they were compelled on the basis of the mass pressure from below to take quite serious blows, or strikes uh, quite serious blows against the interests of capitalism. You saw some nationalizations, significant reforms were uh, uh, brought in uh, to power. You see it enraged the ruling class in, a hot, in all of those countries, uh, the reforms that they took. In 2002, there was the attempted military coup against uh, Chavez, which provoked a mass revolutionary upsurge, compelling Chavez to go further to the left. At that stage, he was even invoking some uh, uh, quotes from Trotsky uh, and talking about opening up a new uh, wave of socialism. He spoke about the need to build a new fifth international, uh, was what he put on the order of the day verbally at that particular uh, uh, stage. And yet, with all of those governments, what you saw was really one uh, critical uh, uh, defect. They struck blows against capitalism. They were able to carry out significant reforms in the interests of the working uh, class of those countries, particularly in Venezuela, because of the oil bonanza that uh, they had. And it was quite a, a dramatic and incredible what uh, reforms were carried through. But they never took the decisive steps of breaking with the capitalism uh, itself. And that is the crucial point. And then from that point of view, really you could say is the most fundamental lesson for the new left of a potential Corbyn government here in Britain, for the potential of a new, maybe for Demos-led government uh, in Spain, or other new left formations coming to power. Won't take exactly the same form, but what we see now break in Latin America is an enormous warning, an alarm bell for the working class internationally. Because not only were the forms transformed into counter-reforms, because what you then saw was a whole series of measures taken by the ruling class and by imperialism of economic sabotage, of boycotts, uh, strike of capital uh, uh, was taking place by uh, the imperialist powers, of the US imperialism in particular, but also then of course uh, by the, the, the capitalist class in those uh, countries. But then that uh, came together with a dramatic change in the economic situation in all of those countries. The price of oil collapsed in Venezuela uh, in particular. And that combined with the sabotage has resulted in a whole economic uh, uh, disaster uh, unfolding. And th this is where I think we have crucial lessons from the point of view of uh, the left here in Europe and the dangers that will face new uh, left governments uh, when they, when they uh, come to power. The ruling classes in Venezuela tried to strike on a number of times. Let us remember in Bolivia, it came to the point almost a civil war. Uh, they were trying to, um, uh, to eject the uh, uh, Morales uh, uh, government uh, uh, from power. Uh, and it was almost a civil war, literally from the point of view of the masses taking up arms uh, against uh, 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 the far right. But then in case after case, 
uh, including for, uh, with Chavez and uh, particularly with Morales, they tried to opt for this position of buying peace or arriving at social peace, negotiating with capitalism to prevent a break uh, uh, from uh, capitalism itself. And had this idea, they like, proclaimed it as, as uh, a new version of socialism, socialism in the 21st century, in essence it was not fundamentally different to the ideas which had been uh, put forward uh, uh, before. And in some ways it didn't go as far as some of the old left reformist the policies of the past. The nationalizations they carried through were not even full nationalizations. Usually it was mixed uh, uh, ownership of the economy, of maybe the state taking 60, 70 percent, uh, etc. It wasn't even wholesale nationalizations that we've seen in Europe in the previous period, and we've seen previously in uh, Latin America under the Allende government in 70 to 73, which nationalized something like 60 percent of the economy. Even the left populist government of Cardenas in Mexico in the 1930s had nationalized uh, the oil sector industry, which is, was a major blow at the time against uh, the interests of US uh, imperialism. So the ruling class then from that point of view have used the position to um, uh, uh, sabotage and undermine these governments. And as is always the case with a policy of reform, what does it do? A policy reform, because it ends up, despite having a period of illusion and concessions, you end up at a certain stage that it neither satisfies, it enrages the ruling class, who don't like any measures being struck against them, but it doesn't satisfy the demands and the interests of the masses and the working class uh, either. And without uh, putting it into a, a blunter fashion, what we've seen in reality is that uh, a betrayal is in, always inherent in reformism, and through that, the price for that betrayal is paid by the working class. And that really brings us to the situation we're facing today, because the price for the failure to break from capitalism in all of these countries is now being paid in the most horrendous uh, position in uh, every one of these, uh, any, every one of these uh, countries. I don't have time in the course of this introduction to go into it in detail, but there is a devastating social catastrophe and collapse in Venezuela. You see it uh, uh, in a whole series of ways of, of a government uh, which is uh, of course now led by Maduro, which is riddled with corruption, is, try is abandoned any pretense of carrying out uh, uh, social uh, reforms. It's in conflict with the right, it is too, but it is riddled with corruption, it's own uh, uh, particular, uh, defending its own particular economic uh, interests. And you see such a devastating collapse. In reality, what we're faced with is the position almost of an element of a failed state as a society is just collapsing in uh, Venezuelan society. It's not just the propaganda of the right in terms of what is taking place. A return of hunger, the starvation, of desperation, facing whole sections of uh, the working class and indeed uh, the middle class, is reflected in this incredible exodus, which for Latin America is new. This mass migration of millions out of the country fleeing into Colombia, going over the border into Brazil, where it's had the devastating uh, consequences as well. That is a new phenomenon in reality. Uh, I mean, you've had the migration, it's true, from uh, Mexico and Central America up to the United States, but not in the, from this point of view of, uh, of the flooding out of refugees, which is what they are facing a desperate position, including, by the way, some of our comrades in Venezuela who uh, uh, had, had, to, had, to, uh, had to flee to Brazil because of the economic and social and political situation, a devastating uh, situation. You see, in a different way, the same crisis, I don't have time to go into it, but now reflected in, in Nicaragua, where it's been a similar process. And in both cases, these governments that have come to power on the basis of, uh, uh, on the basis of a mass movement uh, by the working class and the population, having taken some measures against capitalism, uh, have then become imprisoned by uh, capitalism, and now in the case of Venezuela, and in the case of uh, Nicaragua, it's almost gone full circle. Governments come to power as radical, reforming left uh, of governments, have ended up now assuming the same characteristics of the previous regimes that they overthrow, in terms of corruption, in terms of defense of the system, and we have to say in terms of Nicaragua and an element of it in, in Venezuela, in terms of brutal repression uh, uh, against uh, the masses uh, uh, as well. And that is, I think, uh, uh, a crucial lesson. And the price is paid 
by the working class and it can also be paid by the working class internationally because now you have such a devastating failure in Venezuela where it was put up only a few years ago uh, together with Cuba but particularly Venezuela this is the, uh, uh, the example of uh, you know, a new form of socialism this is the alternative uh, uh, to capitalism and now the failure of that position is being used as a club to beat the whole of the left and the working class uh, internationally. It features a little bit in terms of the last election here in Britain when they used it against Corbyn. It featured a lot in the Spanish state elections uh, uh, as it's being used against the left. And it's been taken by Bolsonaro <laughs> in Brazil and it has been used mercilessly <laughs> uh, to batter uh, the, uh, the left in uh, Brazil. You want Caracas? In, uh, in Brazil, you vote for the PT, you know, and that's what's going to be uh, played in London as well. You want it, if you want Corbyn, you're going to turn London into a, a, a Caracas with everything that, uh, that goes uh, uh, with it. And you pay a price from that point of uh, view. And we see that also now in terms of the position in, uh, in Brazil. The PT and the Lula government was somewhat different. It wasn't quite, it wasn't of the same characteristic of the, uh, as the Chavis government. Uh, it had a much more um, partly neoliberal, but it was a more of a sort of a progressive centre-left type uh, uh, of uh, government. But it came to power against the background of an economic boom, uh, which was phenomenal in terms of what it meant. They were even, despite the limitations of uh, the PT government, they were able to take millions from the favelas of the poorest section and put them into of the youth and put them into universities. They had the propaganda, I was down in Brazil at the time, the whole of the propaganda, and it was against the background of an economic growth, Brazil is now going to join the first world. Uh, that's where, uh, where, where, where uh, we're at. We're on the brink. It was used as part of the BRICS internationally, the great salvation for global capitalism of uh, Brazil, Russia, India and China. Brazil was uh, in that list, and it had a certain benefit. Living standards rose, a section was taken out of poverty, and the position developed. And Lula had a mass uh, base, and it was an economic uh, uh, factors uh, based uh, on that. But they were in, in the PT, as with the socialist parties in Europe, was increasingly brought into uh, 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 the parameters of capitalism, uh, saw its parameters of uh, capitalism, despite the rising living standards, also carried out attacks against uh, the working class, introduced a vicious uh, pension reform, which triggered a split from the PT and the formation of PASOL. Uh, that's a place under the, uh, 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 under the PT, uh, 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 PT government. And it was riddled uh, with the corruption uh, of that, there is no uh, doubt. Lula then inevitably gave way to Dilma. But then you saw uh, the inevitable situation develop, a fundamental change in the economic situation. And it's produced uh, the worst economic <coughs> crisis in Brazil, probably for a hundred years, in terms of the scale of the collapse. And you've had the working class face of the position, where a few years ago they were promised they're going to join the position of uh, the, the European working class in terms of their wages. And by the way, it produced a massive strike wave, because the propaganda of the ruling class was, well, you're gonna, we're, gonna, we're on the brink of joining the first world. Well, the conclusions of the workers at the time, well, if we're joining the first world, we want first world wages. And it did produce a whole series of wage battles uh, uh, at that particular stage, and workers forced concession. But now we're faced with this economic catastrophe, and it's the worst recession for 100 years. And the social consequences of that have been devastating. You have in Brazil an element of uh, Venezuela in terms of a social uh, collapse. It's uh, reflected in the, a mass rise of unemployment amongst all sectors of uh, the population, but it's reflected also with a, a, a social disintegration. And this is one of the uh, main weapons that was used by Bolsonaro uh, during the course of the uh, election campaign. 70,000 people killed in urban violence in the course of 12 months. And that was a crucial weapon that uh, he used, a, a, a desperate position which is opening up, reflecting the poverty, the social collapse, the organized criminal gangs which exist, uh, the drug cartels which are present in São Paulo and Rio, and I don't know if comrades have traveled to Brazil, but it is stunning when you see these organizations, <coughs> not just a few gangsters selling, the street, selling uh, drugs on the streets, you are dealing with organized military machines. They have a, a, a command structure 
There's one organization called the First uh, Command of the Capital, which is mainly based in Sao Paulo. There's another one in Rio called Red Hand, and uh, years ago I visited, I saw the areas that they were involved in. All of them, by the way, had their origins in left-wing Maoist guerrilla organizations who've uh, uh, disintegrated, but they have a structure. They even call it a central committee. They have an, uh, an organized army uh, in terms of uh, the position. Of the drug dealers at different uh, uh, levels. You're dealing with a machine in terms of the position. But it's, 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 it's been like a cancer, how it's crept into the poorest and most downtrodden sections of, uh, of the population. And with the drug cartels especially, you've had this brutal um, uh, 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 social collapse and um, and uh, 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 killing 70,000 people more uh, in the killing fields of, Br of Brazil than what we've seen in certain areas of uh, Syria during the course of the war itself. Now that has been used by Bolsonaro. You've had this collapse, a desperate position, a complete loss of trust and confidence in the leadership of the PT. The ruling class tried to remove Dilma uh, from power. Uh, through a parliamentary coup, because they wanted her out, because despite the fact she was more uh, right-wing in a sense than Lula, but more uh, the, the government itself had moved her to the right, they weren't confident in it. The Brazilian ruling class wanted the PT out of power because they wanted the male fist to carry through a more uh, brutal neoliberal policy of privatisation. That's what they attempted. They then ended up with Temer, who took over from her, through this uh, uh, a position of... Um, of an attempt, uh, well, not, not an attempted, a successful parliamentary coup against uh, Dilma, when it was unbelievable hypocrisy, they were denouncing the PT for corruption, which of course was true, but the corruption involving Lula uh, didn't really involve Dilma. She was never really touched by it personally, but nevertheless, the PT leaders were embezzling millions uh, from, uh, uh, from the different state uh, 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 coffers, but it was absolutely nothing compared to what every other political party was involved in and every other section of the Brazilian ruling class was involved in, as was exposed during the uh, uh, Operation Car Wash, they called it, uh, uh, for the uh, uh, investigations. But here in Brazil, the right has scored a major victory, and it represents a turning point. It is going to open up an entirely new chapter, and it's full of dangers. Will it be a military dictatorship? This has been the main issue of debate and discussion of the um, uh, which is now unfolding on the on, on the uh, Brazilian left is it a, uh, is it going to mean a fascist type of regime will come to power now I don't think it'd be true to say that it's uh, going to be a repetition of going back to the military dictatorships of the 1970s and 80s that took place in the whole of uh, Latin America in the sense of the scale of the brutality or the length of time that this government would necessarily last in power. Uh, Pinochet in Chile lasted decades in terms of, of uh, uh, the, the time that he was uh, in power. That position is not there. It is not either a, a, a cold, calculated seizure of power by the military. But having said that, we have to recognize what it is. It is going to be an extremely authoritarian and repressive uh, government with a fig leaf of parliamentary democracy around it, and we should remember, for the comrades uh, who uh, followed the events in Latin America, in Peru, Fujimori uh, was also a parliamentary democracy formerly, but it was absolutely brutal in terms of uh, uh, the executions and the death squads that were unleashed uh, 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 in that. And that, uh, that uh, uh, type of scenario in different states of, uh, of Brazil uh, can open up. The government itself will move uh, to carry out repressive measures. We already have in Rio, uh, the new governor has changed the laws so that it is virtually impossible now to take any legal action against a policeman who uh, pulls a pistol and execute, uh, shoots uh, anybody dead on the streets. And there's been many cases, many cases in, uh, in Rio where the police have pulled pistols, <coughs> they've seen a young, uh, usually a black kid, a young black kid with a, a mobile phone in his hand and they've used that in the excuse that they thought it was a gun and then he's just been uh, executed. That will be le virtually legalised in reality. What you're going to have in Rio, in effect, is a, is a version, probably because of the hard line, and you have a militarisation of Rio already, and it was chilling, I don't know if the comrades saw the video, video, for those workers in Latin America who saw in Rio, after Bolsonaro's victory, 
the way the military came onto the streets in the military trucks and the military tanks, it was a chilling reminder of, uh, of what had gone there before. And that sent and has sent you know, a chill down the spine of those who can remember what it was like in Latin America in the, in the, in the, the 70s. And it would be brutal. There'd be an element here at the Philippines of what the Duterte uh, uh, regime has uh, uh, carried out. And they used the position of, uh, of cracking down on the violence. That will be their excuse that uh, they, um, they use. And there'll be other elements. You already have uh, the position. That's uh, uh, the formal position. What the government formally does is maybe a bit more open. But what this will do is unleash the local dogs of war who are not under the direct control necessarily of the government, of fascistic gangs, of groups within the police in the different uh, state machines who will feel they have a free hand to now take a, a measure. You saw it with Bolsonaro himself of how they're preparing to use this. Uh, Bolos, who was the uh, um, uh, presidential candidate of PASOL and uh, the MTST, the uh, urban homeless uh, movement, Bolsonaro has uh, pronounced that they are now regarded uh, as a terrorist organisation. Bolas may be uh, moved toward, they may move towards arresting uh, at a certain stage. We don't know how that will go. Already, we speak to our comrades, of course they fe featured uh, uh, young blacks, uh, uh, attacks on the gay and lesbian community have now started already on the streets. People who are evidently uh, uh, more openly gay in some of the big cities even have uh, have been beaten up uh, uh, by uh, uh, fascists. There's a, a, a enormous polarisation which uh, has taken place. Uh, but it is not all one-sided. You've already had big demonstrations against it. And one of the features in this uh, new uh, scenario is that this government will probably quite rapidly be a government of crisis. There are different contending forces within this uh, government. It will go into all sorts of splits and divisions. Bolsonaro's economic policy uh, some uh, previously his position was it was not pro neoliberal and there's a point there uh, that we have to bear in mind it's not the whole uh, story uh, at all but the brazilian military from which he comes from is not the same as the chilean military in chile the military went wholesale over to support neoliberal policy the tradition of the brazilian military has been to support a policy of state intervention of, of Brazilian nationalism and a more uh, defensive uh, state uh, position. Bolsonaro had, uh, uh, reflected that uh, at one stage. Now he's switched under the pressure of the ruling class to support more uh, uh, policies. But he has the military in the government. There will be contending struggles that will open up between the different factors. He will have to go into a coalition. There are 30 parties in the Brazilian Congress. I mean, you have a whole series of local fiefdoms of uh, uh, state interests, of landlords, of, of uh, uh, feudal uh, landowners, etc. All of them have their own contending position. All sorts of divisions will open up within the, this uh, uh, regime, as you see it uh, uh, already. You already seen while Bolsonaro says uh, uh, the MTST. Uh, should be regarded as a terrorist organisation. His new uh, Ministry of Justice, who was uh, uh, by the name of uh, Soje uh, uh, Marrow, who was the head uh, judge who carried through uh, the Operation Car Wash investigations. He's not a friend of the working class, by the way, because he also ruled in favour of Lula <laughs> going to prison. But he said, no, it's not true. Bolos and the MTST are not going to be declared as terrorist organisations. He may be a bit more uh, open, you know, uh, to represent a bit more of a, of a more intelligent policy to defend the interests of the ruling class. On the other side, the new Minister of the Economy, um, who, who they will appoint, Paulo uh, Gubez, is a vicious pro-neoliberal individual. His, uh, his position is there should be 100% privatisation of everything. That's uh, what he stands for, uh, openly. And that's what he will try and drive. But there'll be all sorts of interests. But the key question that will be posed here is how the, the, uh, uh, the struggle develops again against this government. Because it will be repression they'll base themselves on. It will intimidate uh, a layer. On the other side, they're going to come forward with these attacks on the working class. The pension reforms under Tenor was defeated in the Brazilian Congress. They've now re-announced they're going to bring it back in. 
straight away. That can trigger a movement uh, against sec sections of the working class uh, and the youth, and other similar attacks uh, can, can do it. We've seen the coming together of different uh, of forces. It will pose all sorts of very important tactics that our comrades, as I'm sure Andre will explain, of what we advocate in this position. We're part of a front, not just in Pasol. Uh, there's the um, a front which exists, the People Without Fear, which is a very important organisation. It has within it uh, Pasol. It has uh, 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 within it sections of the Communist Party, the Trade Union Federation, the Kurt, and social uh, movements are involved in that. We would advocate a united front, including with social sections and the rank and file base of the Workers' Party, which still has a certain uh, a base, uh, a big important base amongst particularly older sections of the working class. We're in favour of having a united front, even with Lula, against some of the repressive measures, but not a political uh, pact with the, the Lula uh, government, because we have to bring forward in this position the people that are responsible for this catastrophe opening up has been precisely the policies that were introduced by the PT and we cannot remain silent on that question despite the uh, uh, threat. We can have a block, even with Lula, demanding his release against all repression, against, uh, uh, against the attacks against all, joint demonstrations we can have and we will support that, but not a political pact defending the uh, political program that the PT <coughs> leadership uh, put forward. And we have to struggle within this for the building of a new socialist uh, alternative and opposition. Probably around Pasol, it is not clear though how that will develop. We have a national meeting this weekend actually at the Pasol National Directorate in Brasilia where Comrade André and other comrades are currently uh, uh, are present. It is not clear what Bolos, who was the Pasol candidate, is going to uh, do. How, if they're going to block, stay in this block with the um, with um, uh, with Pasol and other social forces, or what they may move to try and accommodate under the pressure for unity to the PT leadership. He recently has visited Lula in prison. Not necessarily a wrong thing in and of itself to do, but what is the political agreement that he's uh, uh, negotiating uh, with Lula is a key point, and we have to uh, see how that uh, uh, position opens up. Uh, and, uh, and, and develops, but it's going to be a training ground this for a new uh, a new generation, because in this uh, position in Latin America it had a, as, as a very brutal history of struggle, but inevitably because of what happened with the end of the dictatorships, the economic boom, for the new generation they are not prepared for this degree of struggle. I was in Brazil earlier this year. It's true in Brazil, in the rural areas I visited the state Goiás which is a very rural area, where you still have feudalism, by the way, you still have slavery uh, uh, there. We have marvellous comrades there conducting a very heroic uh, struggle. These sort of executions that we saw at Marielli in uh, Rio really have always been the case in these rural back, uh, outward states. They've not gone away, but it's not been the case for a whole generation in the big urban areas. It was seen as something different. This has been a shock for the new youth. And they, they're not really prepared for this. They can be hard and battled, but it's going to be a, a bloody uh, struggle. These forces are not going to uh, step down on the basis of an academic uh, uh, debate. The forces that are involved there. It poses the question of mobilizations and building a social base. It means we have to come forward, as our comrades are doing, with raising the question of building uh, genuine uh, uh, committees of self-defense of workers of the youth in the uh, favelas, etc., to deal uh, with this position, protection of meetings, uh, etc., and be prepared for a real struggle uh, uh, to uh, unfold. And that undoubtedly can uh, develop in the course of the next period. Now, very briefly, comrades, I don't have time. This is a key scenario for uh, uh, Brazil, but it is a point here, as Sharma commented on the rally, it, it, this is a big blow. Does it represent a major swing to the right? Well, that's a bit more complicated uh, in terms of it, because if you, even within Bolsonaro's victory, if you look at the opinion polls, the clear majority are still against privatisation, they're against the attacks uh, 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 that are taking place in cuts, uh, etc., and broadly are defended a more uh, uh, a radically uh, left uh, position. But this government, it, will t it may take longer, but we should also take heart from what has happened in other countries of Latin America. You saw the coming to the power in uh, to Argentina of Macri, 
a vicious neoliberal right-wing uh, uh, government, uh, again reflecting uh, uh, this wave. But nevertheless, in a very short space of time, I think it was about a year or so since the government came to power, their uh, neoliberal policies have provoked three general strikes against uh, uh, the attacks of the, of the Macri uh, government. Argentina is now on the brink and uh, are plunging into another economic uh, debt crisis uh, and will provoke big social explosions. You've seen the emergence of some Trotskyist uh, forces which have sustained quite an important base uh, in that uh, position. It's a measure that even these right governments can provoke a, a, a backlash and that will be the case in Brazil. However, in Brazil it's going to be a, a, a bit more of a protracted process and it will be a, a, a battle uh, in terms of uh, that position. But it's not the whole picture in terms of the position. We have a major point, I don't have time to develop it, but a major point of departure for the continent is what has happened in Mexico, which is a decisive uh, uh, issue. The coming to power of AMLO, which represents an historic break with the, uh, the past in uh, uh, the, the different regimes that you've had the, uh, in uh, Mexico. It was a blow, in a sense, against the uh, ruling class of Mexico, <laughs> despite the fact that he's tried to accommodate himself with capitalism. Uh, that's been the trajectory that it's been on. But what we have to be cognizant is it's not going to be a stable position. Already that's triggered marvellous movements of the youth uh, because of the expectations which have been raised in the massive University of Yunnan in Mexico City uh, and other areas uh, as well. Him coming to power is going to unleash massive expectations despite his attempts to move to the right and it's going to open up an entirely new a chapter of struggle within Mexican society which is crucial both for Latin America but also for the United States uh, for obvious uh, uh, reasons. Where he goes AMLO is unclear. He may just capitulate and go to the rest. But we have to remember Mexican tradition here is a country of tradition of revolution in very confused uh, uh, form but that tradition uh, is there and even AMLO despite being moved to the left now against the background of a major economic recession both in Mexico, the United States, in a global position, with the social upheavals that that can provoke, even he can be propelled back in a more radical uh, uh, direction. Let us not forget it was Cardenas, who gave Trotsky exile, by the way, and he wasn't a revolutionary socialist, uh, uh, Trotsky, uh, Trots um, Trotsky was, but uh, <laughs> was, uh, Cardenas was uh, at that time. But they were compelled, the Cardenas government was compelled to nationalise uh, and strike a blow against the interests uh, of imperialism. So, comrades, there are many aspects of this discussion, uh, but it is rich with lessons for the future and a warning to the left. It won't take its own, the same form as in Latin America. Europe, in that sense, of course, is very different to Latin America. But the failure of the left and what it has opened up uh, is, a, is a stark warning for uh, us here in Europe and other countries. And there is a point that I would just conclude on this is an indication of the new era of capitalism. We had the position of Bolsonaro in Brazil, an extreme case. You had the position of Trump in the United States. You can have that scenario. You have the FPO in Austria. You've seen the growth of the right. Now, we have to draw a balanced conclusion from that. But one thing we have to be clearly conscious of. This is the new norm of what capitalist society means. It will come in different forms ebbs and flows in terms of their strength, but the idea of going back to a peaceful position of a little tete-a-tete -tete between the left and the right, that is gone in terms of the position. And to build a new left, it has to be a combative left that sinks powerful roots amongst the working class. And unfortunately, in Brazil, Pessoal, while it is very significant and very important, and it's a potential uh, uh, force to develop, has not yet sunk those deep social roots amongst the working class. It has not gone into the favelas in general in the way that the PT did in its period when it was initially uh, formed and that has to be done and it requires the hardening and building of a hardened, more combative position but this is a new era of capitalism that has opened up. It's going to be a semi-permanent feature, these far-right populist positions, until the working class comes forward and is able to decisively put its stamp uh, uh, on the political situation in, in terms of struggle and in terms of building a viable uh, alternative. Through these defeats, victories can come and they can pave the way 
through uh, uh, the development of a new generation which has drawn all of the lessons uh, necessary. But I think, comrades, those are some of the most important lessons that we have to draw from this process in Latin America for uh, uh, Europe, which is a pointer to, um, uh, to, to what is necessary in terms of building uh, new mass socialist forces that are going to be able to uh, challenge capitalism in the course of the next period.